Welcome back, everybody. Isaiah Stanback is best known in Western Washington for his prowess on the football field, a standout at Garfield High School and with the UW Huskies. Isaiah's pro career included stints with the Seahawks and the New York Giants, with whom he won a Super Bowl ring. Now a successful businessman, he has earned an MBA. He's a motivational speaker. Isaiah's in town sharing another one of his passions, encouraging student athletes to be active citizens and make their voices heard. So we are very happy to welcome Isaiah Stanback to New Day. It's good to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I've been watching Thank you it. forever, and here you are. <laughs> and you're a pretty busy guy. Yeah, I'm running around a little bit. Where did this motor come from? You know what? It's, you got to make it happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to make it happen. Yeah, so I've just been busy just taking care of things, taking care of the family uh, down in Dallas, and um, trying, to, trying to stay active as possible. Well, the cool thing is you are doing something that is paying it forward Definitely. with young athletes, not just in terms of, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of people talking to them about their career and yeah. their money and their... Yeah you know, their fitness, and you're talking to them about their brains, their hearts, and their citizenship. What moved you to do this? I think it's just my upbringing, honestly. Um, you know, growing up here in the Central District of Seattle, you know, you kind of had to have that drive, that motor to, to do more than, than yourself, right? So to try to have an impact and leave a footprint. So, you know, now growing up and having the experiences I've had, I feel like it's selfish of me you know, not to really pay that forward. You know, I've been through a lot. I've had a lot of life experiences, yeah. a lot of uh, adversity, perseverance, and I feel like, you know, to bring somebody else and share that experience with others is just going to be that much beneficial. Well, and part of that has been injury. You have recovered yeah. from several injuries that would have been, you yeah. know, <laughs> the end for a lot of people. Definitely. And that, that resiliency, I think, is, yeah. is probably the most important quality a for person sure. can have and the most important thing you can talk to a young person about. Yeah. Um, so when you talk about rise to vote, mm -hmm. when you encourage young people to get involved in that way, how do you persuade them? Because I think it's sort of, you know, as parents, we try to do it, and sometimes it's one ear and out the other. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of it's just instilling in them their, how important they are, right? Uh, each individual is important, right? But helping them understand, hey, listen, especially these young athletes, how much of a platform they're really on, yes. um, especially in this age with social media. Um, there's always eyes watching. We used to always say that all the time when we were younger, but now there's you know, all kind of different platforms you can utilize, and you say one thing, and it gets retweeted, reposted, whatever. So true. Um, so helping them to understand, hey, you can leave an impact. You have a huge impact by simply just stating what you feel, right? Stating what's, what's, what's important to you um, and getting these initiatives out. Um, people are going to always pay attention and, you know, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's important to be able to share that versus just trying to try to contain that in and feel like you're not worth, right? There's been sort of this, this backlash that athletes get sometime that they yeah. should just shut up and dribble <laughs> kind of thing, which uh, it seems crazy to me, but yeah. I know it's out there and people say it. Um, on the other hand, I think some of our most interesting thinkers these yeah. days are athletes, um, a recently retired athlete from the Seattle Seahawks comes to mind yeah. in that regard. How do you talk to young people about sort of finding that line between expressing their lived experiences but not engendering, you know, so much controversy that their word gets lost? Yeah, I think there's a way to go about it, right? Um, <clears throat> I think there's, you have to be very smart, right, about how you expect somebody to then take what you're, showing, mm -hmm. what you're trying to get across. So, you know, you could be passionate about something, you could be diligent about something, but if you're so angry about it that you're loud and you're yelling and you're, um, you're uh, abrasive, then people can't receive that, right? Right? So there's a way that you can be, you know, you can be formal, you can still mm -hmm. get across your points and still be passionate, but the disrespect line, you know, that's when people kind of turn, you know, turn a dead ear to you. Interesting. Yeah. Because communication really isn't just about me talking, it's yeah. about you receiving, receiving what I've it. said and, and me being respectful of how you receive that. Exactly. I think that's important. You've taken um, part of the Civil Rights Tour at the King Center. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience. It was an awesome experience. Uh, working with RISE, um, or, you know, organization trying to tackle some social injustice issues. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of athletes that were, weren't willing uh, to really speak out. And, and, I, and I raised my hand. I was like, hey, I'll, I have no problem doing that, right? <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Um, so I know who I am and I know my worth. And I wanted to go out there and be a part of that. But we did some things. We were out there with the NFL commissioner, uh, you know, the, the current and the former Paul Tagliabue and some of the other owners around the league. And just really going out there and just having a round table and just getting these topics right. on the table, right? You know, and it's, it's important to know that you don't have to agree on everything, right? But again, like we just, uh, just, just touched on, you need to be able to hear the other person, right? Mm -hmm. At least come to some common ground and say, listen, I don't necessarily agree all the time, but I need, I, I can understand why you feel this way. I can understand your yeah, perspective. Yeah, just so, where you're coming from exactly. in that regard. So, so where do you think the NFL is now? I mean, there was so much, the, the <laughs> kneeling situation, yep. the misunderstanding what that was about, in my opinion, for a yeah. lot of people, and the back and forth, and 
have we gotten to a place where we can hear each other a little better? I think as you sat around that table, <laughs> did you feel like we did or we didn't? I think I think that we're at least hearing. Uh, hopefully, we're working to the point where we're listening, yeah. <laughs> you know, yes. to each other. Good distinction. Um, so, Good distinction. Um, we're, I feel like we're getting there, right? I feel like you know that you know what Kaepernick did. I think it raised a lot of controversy, uh, or, you know, uh, either for or against whatever it may be. But it forced a conversation. And ultimately, whenever you're passionate about something, whenever you're trying to bring some attention to to something. You need to have that. I feel like you, there's always going to be some form of controversy, right? right? So and I think it's important um, that 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 topic he was 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 approached because now we're talking, right? Now we're having to listen, uh, and regardless if you agree or not, you know there's some kind of compromise that has to happen. And again, again that conversation just moves it forward. I think this whole idea of good faith needs to come into yes. play. That that we're not arguing just to argue yeah. or just to create trouble, but mm -hmm. that I make a good faith effort to listen to yeah. you and vice versa, and yeah. then we connect yeah. and can build some trust. Definitely, I think it's, it's, you have to be humble, right? You have to be humble. I think for so many, so many people feel like they're always right. Um, and, and, and humbling yourself to know that, hey, I can learn something from somebody else, even if they're from a different background, you know, right. different experiences, that alone is gonna allow for us to have progress, right? So, you know, if you feel like you're entitled, if you feel like you're always in the, in the right, then there's not gonna be any progress, right? But if you're willing to say, hey, listen, at least I'll listen to what somebody else has to say and see and try to see their perspective. Then we can start making some strides. It for won't it. kill me. Exactly. To, to hear the words. Exactly. <laughs> More exactly. than likely. So let's talk about voting because I I do. I, there was some statistics out just lately about most of the voters being over 50 or over 55, and I yeah. thought you know which I am, yeah. but I don't want to be in charge of what happens <laughs> to all the young people. I want to be aware of what's important sure. to them and listen to them. But mostly I want them to vote and Definitely. be you know influential in the process. So when you're talking to to mm -hmm. youngsters. What do you tell them about that? I tell them that you know that the decisions that are being made or things are going to directly affect us, right? And our families for that are going forward for decades. Exactly. This isn't something that hey, you know, it gets voted on and it doesn't really bother me right now, and then I could deal with it later or the next person I could vote on them. Stuff has long-lasting impacts, right? Yeah. So if we turn, if we're just turning our turning our head to it and not paying attention to what's going on, there's a lot of initiatives getting passed through. There's a lot, a lot of things that are getting passed along that are going to affect us directly, right? Every day. Every single day. So it's important to help them understand, hey, listen, your voice matters. For so long, I knew, I didn't pay attention to voting for the longest, mm -hmm. right? Until I started you know, becoming an adult and saying, there's a lot of things that are going on that I don't agree with, right? And it's like, oh, I have a voice in this. Exactly. Right? So, I don't have to just yeah. sit here and yeah. take whatever's going yeah. on. Now, you also have a fitness center in Dallas, too? Yes. I, I, uh, I want to <laughs> have whatever you're having for breakfast. There must be some Wheaties <laughs> and some coffee involved. There's a lot going on. Yeah, so as soon as I retired, I retired in 2013 and um, finishing up the grad school, and I started a steadfast fitness and performance, which is a personal <laughs> training you're performance facility. Me just I know, to this. I know. But it's, you know, I was tired of what the industry was and not taking care of people, right? It was all about making money, so we wanted to create a culture and environment where everybody felt welcome and can get better. That sounds great. You're a good person, Isaiah Thank Samak. You. It's Thank great you. to meet it's you. It's nice meeting you as well. Thank you so much. If you are a student athlete you know would like more information about Rise to Vote, please visit New Day's homepage. We'll have all the good stuff for you there.